next up in your Gmail settings, let's look at grammar and spelling and autocorrect and ways that your Gmail inbox could help you or where to turn these features off if they bother you. All right, we're still in the general settings within the main settings in Gmail. And about, well, let's see, this is the first screen. So at the bottom of that first screen of things, you're gonna see grammar, spelling, autocorrect, smart compose, personalization. Okay, here's where these things are. I have them turned on because I misspell things once in a while and I don't wanna send it out looking unprofessional and I don't mind the suggestions. I have other people in my world who hate grammar and spelling and autocorrect and smart compose suggestions. Here's where they should go to turn those off. You wanna check your settings and decide what works for you. If you'd like some grammar suggestions, here it is. It'll automatically point out when something doesn't exactly match up like it needs to and suggest how you can fix it. Just like autocorrect would do in Word or Google Docs or anywhere else that you are online. So here's grammar suggestions, spelling suggestions, which can be helpful, autocorrect, which can be a blessing and a curse. If you get upset with it, you can turn it off. Here's where that is. There's also smart compose and Smart Compose Personalization. These are new in the last several months. Maybe you've noticed it. When you get an email, it'll automatically suggest a response, which is kind of handy. It will also automatically try to finish your sentences for you. That can be nice and suggestive and help you with things. It could also be a hassle. Maybe that wasn't what you wanted to say. If it's getting in your way and canceling your vibe and you don't want that, here's where it is. You can turn off the suggestions. You can turn on or off the personalization as it's learning you and thinking about and suggesting the ways that you might naturally respond to things. Okay, so that's grammar, spelling, autocorrect, and smart compose features right here. Just some more things to consider. Okay, same way with smart reply, show suggested replies when available. Also, in between these things are nudges, which are new and kind of handy. These, I have both of these on for me. If you've seen this and you want it turned off, here's where to turn it off. Nudges will automatically suggest emails that you might need to reply to. So if I got an email last week and I opened it up and I didn't reply for some reason, if nothing else has happened in that email thread in a certain period of time, it's going to come up at the top of my inbox and suggest with a nudge that maybe I need to go handle this. Now, maybe I've already handled it in person. Maybe there's a reason I didn't respond to that. Who knows? But it's suggested so that you can reply to it or follow up on it. It's been three days since you've heard from this person. Do you want to send them another follow up? So nudges can be really helpful if you've got business that you're conducting back and forth, especially in today's day and age and in our world where we are conducting a lot of business via email and virtually, we're not seeing those people, the nudges can be really helpful. So that's the middle of your suggestions. Grammar, spelling, autocorrect, smart compose, smart compose personalization, and nudges. You can also get here and learn more about nudges where Google itself will tell you here's how these things get set up. Okay, so Here's those features. If they're not on and you want them on, here's where they are. If they're on and you want them turned off, here's how to get in and turn them off. Enjoy. Go out and write amazing email without, there's no reason for you to have a grammar or a spelling mistake in an email. You've got these capabilities built in. So turn them on and use them.